Welcome to the Halloween special. <coughs> no, I'm not going to do that the whole episode. <laughs> Hey, welcome everyone to the Halloween special. Just an excuse for me to dress up like a buffoon and make a mess of my shop. Now, today we're gonna put the route on pause because, you know, Giles can't really work on it. And we're going to work on a small little Halloween special project. So I was thinking, what could I do? You know, what's themed? And then obviously I cut my finger. And that gave me a great idea. Let's build a guillotine. So I've made this design of this guillotine, which I'll sort of blend in over here. And um, I wanted to make it look pretty nice as well um, and be sturdy. And so I'd like to use a hardwood rather than like MDF or, or plywood or something like that. Even pine, I feel the, the pine I have is not the greatest quality. A lot of knots and whatnot. So I'm going to reach back to the paduke that I used for the odd bits on the router table and that I normally make like dice trays in that. Plus it smells fantastic. I know I've said that before. But yeah, so first step is I'm going to mill down um, the last bit long piece that I have because I've, I've got a little bit here, but it's not enough to do this entire project. So I'm going to mill down the last big beam and then cut two centimeter strips. Um, I'm going to focus on the big frame of the, the guillotine first and then focus on the things that go inside and then the rest like the, the supporting legs and the bench is just I'm going to say it now, the simple part, but it's going to be the part that, that's just added on for stability in that. And then lastly, once I have sort of the inner sliding bit, I'll actually work on the guillotine blade. I have some aluminium over here and some metal in that, and I'll try and figure out how to best make the blade. Um, yeah. The one thing I wanted to add is like, I, I kind of do want this guillotine to work to some extent. It obviously shouldn't cut a finger, but hey, if we can cut a frankfurter or maybe a carrot, I mean, carrot is a tall order, right? I mean, that's quite hard, but, but that would be pretty cool. Um, at the same time, I don't want anyone in this family to have another injury. So let's see, let's see what we can come up with, right? So I'm fully expecting this makeup to run really badly, and I hope I don't have to continue the project tomorrow, mainly because I would like to get you know, some footage in for the router table, but also I don't want to have to put this on again. Um, but hey, let's see how far we get. Okay, so I have this mill piece that I just milled, and I have this. This is a piece from um, leftover from a previous project. Um, now, what I could do is I could cut a groove. So, so for the side of the guillotine, we need long pieces about 40 centimeters tall, and they'll have a five mil groove in the middle, and that's where all the slidey action happens. Now, the thing is, I could just cut a groove all along here and then cut the pieces out that I need, but it's it's you know. It's a chunk out of this and it's nice and wide, so I don't know if I'll need this for anything else. So what I'm thinking of is trying to use this, and what I'll do is I'll cut the grooves on one side, flip the piece over, and cut the groove again, then widen it to get to the right width, and then cut it in the middle. And I think that should be fine, as long as both sides are cut the same way and orientated the same way, the grooves should match, but I've been known to be wrong, so let's try and figure it out, right? Okay, this looks really, really good. Those, come on, focus here. Focus here, hey, hey, hey. Way, way. Okay, this looks really, really good. Camera's just not focusing on me. It's detecting me, wait a minute. This is looking really, really good. They are exactly the same distance from the sides, same depth, perfect. Now I just need to find the middle of this thing. <laughs> Great. 
Right, a really cool trick for finding the middle of a piece is you take one of these angular things, I hope you can see, and um, you sort of guess where it is, right? So you give it a go. I mean, you, what you could do is you could actually just measure and see, okay, this is five, five and a half, so you know it's 2.75, hello puppy. So you go to 2.75-ish. And then what you do is with that there, I'm gonna try and do it the wrong way around. You, um, you just draw a line, right? Like that. And then you do the same line from the other side. You do the same thing from the other side. And that is pretty good. I'm gonna draw a thinner line. I think I nailed that spot on. Right? And then this side, not quite. So I'm gonna do it mispronounced. So say I miss it, right? Let me let me. Okay, I'm going to do it badly so that you can see the concept. You do it from that side, and you do it from this side. Now immediately, what you can see is those two lines don't meet. I hope you can see it. I know the words quite up, but those two lines don't meet. So you know you need to aim for the middle of that. So then over here we do it again. We did that side, and if those lines are right on top of each other, like here, the bottom here, you know you've hit the dead center. And then, once you have that, I'm gonna double check, perfect. Once you have that, you can literally just mark that as your center. Sorry, it's a bit awkward. But yeah, you get to this. So now, I know the center of this piece of wood is there and it's accurate. The other thing you can do is there's a jig with two dowels and a hole and you can clamp it sideways and it has a hole right between the middle of the dowels and you know if you have that but seeing as I don't have one I will just use this. Cool so anyway let me go and split this in half. So I was going to um, cut them shorter to be two centimeter like the, like width as well, but you know what, it doesn't really matter because these are just like the main posts. So perfect. Next step, I need to make the piece that goes in the middle. Um, it's going to be a big strip. However, I need to obviously put the tenons that will slide in here. That's what that's the next step that I need to create. So they will slide so that they can go up and down in here and also I can attach the cross beam and that. So I'll make one piece where the tenons fit perfectly and it slides and then glue the top and the bottom, you know, the bottom with the head hole. And then let's go from there. So I made a horrible realization. Um, which is surprising, I didn't notice it before, but the crosscut sled is no longer 90 degrees to the blade. So I was just trying to figure out why one side, when I was flipping it over, was different width, etc. And then I tried to get this thing to be 90 degrees on all sides, and that didn't work, and I was like, what's going on? And I realized that this is 90 degrees, and it's off by quite a bit, so it's like nearly a millimeter off at the back of the blade compared to the front. And I remember I, I sort of tuned the the, table saw because I realized at one point there wasn't perfectly parallel to the mitre track. So, obviously I built this before, I never adjusted that. Now instead of spending hours and hours trying to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use just the mitre gauge and, and the fence. Um, it's not quite as nice as using this, but I think that'll, that'll work fine. Um, actually I can just use the fence, come to think of it. But yeah, a bit of a pain, but hey, what can you do? As you can see, I've attached a piece of wood as a sacrificial fence to my actual fence. This prevents me from damaging it while moving the fence all the way up to the blade. Also, I'm using the miter gauge and the fence. This is the only cut where we're allowed to do this because we're not cutting through the entire piece of wood. Do not ever under any other circumstance, use the fence and the mitre gauge at the same time. What will happen is your piece could get trapped and it'll shot out and you could 
you know, injure yourself, or in my case, I could even break that window, which would be way worse. No, but seriously, do not ever use both of them at the same time. It is super, super dangerous. So, after a lot of to and fro, we've got it, and it, and it actually slides pretty good. Obviously for the bottom parts, I'll just glue it together. But I think, you know, I think we've got something here. Let's get on with it. And then I'm just going to put this in place so that it stays square right there. You can see, this actually moves fairly freely. I might not even have to do anything later. But yeah, we'll wait for that to dry. Um, and I'll quickly sand these down. And I guess we need to look at the blade as well. Okay, let's quickly talk blade. So this is the piece that'll hold the blade. Now I'm gonna make the blade slightly narrower than this, but on one side I'm gonna put the, the blade, and like I said, I'll, I'll, I've got some aluminum sheeting. I'll cut it out of that. On the other side, I'm gonna put two squares so that I have a bit of weight, because I want this obviously to go down fairly quickly, right? Um, so, yeah. Let's add some metalworking to this woodworking channel. <laughs> I then tried to use my Dremel tool to cut the aluminium. I tried the cutting discs, I tried the ceramic discs. I even tried the little extension wire thing of a bobby. But no luck. I, I really struggled getting through and then ultimate disaster struck when the actual screw holding in the disc snapped off. And um, yeah, I then decided to get the big boy. Well, quite warm. Okay, so this actually turned out pretty good. I obviously need to get the powder coating off. I thought it was some plastic sheeting, but it's just the powder coating that's sort of peeling off. I guess I can just sand that off. I sort of tried to blunt the edges a little bit. I need to sand that properly with some, with a sander, etc. Um, it'll fit on like this pretty much. And then to be fair, I can open this now, I'm sure. So we have an idea of what it would, how it would work. So this is the guillotine finger in here. This thing would come down. Obviously, as predicted, it's a bit tight. But because this is on top here, uh, it'll sort of, sorry. Oh, I made a mistake here. I didn't account for that. So I might cut this again tomorrow, but but yeah, I mean, you get the gist, right? The guillotine snaps down there. The only thing is, this is, is very light, and I was going to use the same material for weight, because obviously I want it to go down, you know, realistically, heavily, etc. So I need to find a way how to make that heavier. I have some metal outside, like an old table tennis table, so maybe I can cut some stuff out of that to attach on the other side to, to make it a bit heavier. And then obviously I, I still need to smooth this out so that, you know, when you drop it, it goes down faster. It goes pretty fast already, but this isn't very heavy. So we need to definitely weigh that down a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, I'm most probably gonna recut this now that I saw, I need to make this part. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually gonna make it longer per se. I'm just gonna make this angle way more 
aggressive. So it looks more dangerous. But yeah, again, time, time like flies. I was like really hoping I could get the whole project done today. I'm so naive when it comes to this. But you know, in terms of what you need to do, it's quite quick. But I, I really wanted to make sure that the, the tenons were the right width, etc. So I ended up taking way more time than I thought. So yeah, I guess I'll continue tomorrow and roll this makeup back on. Or maybe I'll just sleep like this. Nah. So since you've been gone, which most probably was like 0.2 seconds, um, I've showered, washed, reapplied makeup this morning. But also I went along and I created a few more blades as you can see. So I created another blade that was bigger that would fit the slot. Um, however, I struggled getting the powder coating off, especially when it was really thin and I started mangling this quite badly. But that's how I learned how to get it off. It's really difficult to get powder coating off. Hey? Um, I, I did ruin this chisel. <laughs> well, I didn't ruin it. I have to resharpen it, which is great for a future video. But in essence, I made this, and you can see, well, I don't know if you can make it out in the video, but on this side, it's quite like sandblasted because I sanded it, the last bit of the powder coating off. And the other side, I just left damaged, and then I think it looks cool. Ideally, we'd want to use something like metal and make it look rusty, obviously. But I think it's more about the function than visuals, really. I mean, I still make it look nice, but in this case, it's more about that. Um, other than that, the frame is sort of in place and it kind of works pretty well already, if you ask me. Um, however, this, this I still feel is quite light, even, even with the blade, the blade doesn't weigh a thing. So I'm thinking of attaching this washer. This washer is fairly heavy. It'll just give it a little bit of an extra force. However, it looks stupid if there's a washer on the back. So I might just try and drill a hole Put the washer in and cover that up. Not too sure yet. Um, I'll figure something out. But yeah, um, so yeah, I will attach the blade to this and figure out what I'll do there. Then assemble it all, close it up, and lastly, just sort of get all the bits and bobs to make the rest, you know, where the poor victim lies, etc. I'll just strip, strip it down from the wood I've got and we'll go from there. Okay, so I had an epiphany. Um, I didn't have a bit that was long enough to do this, but I can route this in and I've got this like Tack Life. It's like a Dremel machine, just different brand. Um, and it has some router bits. So I'm gonna try and route a little hole so that I can inset this a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take the actual blade that I'll use and hide it behind that. And then you won't really notice anything. So I think, I think that's the solution to go for. Um, let's try something new. You know, I'll be honest. While that is fun, I'm just gonna use a palm router. It's so much quicker. Guess it's the moment of truth, right? <laughs> that is so cool, I so wanna try it. But I'll wait. So you know how this channel is basically about things that go wrong? Well, sometimes things go really right and it's pure luck and I, I promise you I did not do this. So I'm just gonna place you here. So, these are the four panels. And by the way, I just, the thin one that was a bit weird, I just took the thicker one and, and used it in the band. So again, again, I forgot to take the footage. I tend to do that a lot. 
But um, anyway, so I took these pieces and I thought, oh, let's see how many of them I need. And I laid them down. Hey, look at that. They are actually exact. If I actually remove these quickly and put these on here, that is flush front to the back. And I promise you, I did not measure that. I measured left and right. And afterwards I thought, crap, I didn't measure how many of these I need. So that's what I was going to do now. And well, you know, sometimes you get lucky. Okay, all the parts are now ready for final assembly. Um, I actually don't know where to begin. I'm gonna, most parts I'm gonna just put together with glue and nails so that it holds. But I feel like with this part, I will need to screw it in place first. So what I'm thinking of is I'm going to screw through here, through the bottom, put two screws there and go from there. So let me, let me do that quickly off camera and then when I'm back we'll continue. Sadly, at this point, the microphone battery died, um, and you'll see there's some further footage beyond this, but I decided to just use some simple beeswax and finish the whole thing top to bottom. I also created some string using some twine I had um, and my power drill, which I then attached through various holes to the guillotine blade, as you'll see in later footage. Okay, so here we go, the final product. Can't wait to can't wait to test this. Now this oof, it's quite a hard vegetable here. Nice little cucumber that I've picked from the garden, one of the last batch. Let's go. <laughs> you are hereby sentenced to death. Doesn't get old. Wow, that is pretty cool. Let me go and show my family and test some more vegetables <laughs> and victims. <laughs> As you saw in that clip, it works all right. It's, it's surprising that I cut the carrot, um, but really struggled with the Viennas. Um, I was expecting that to be a bit better. Also, when it hit the strawberry, I, I, I kind of sharpened it a little bit. It's not sharp by any means, but just made it a bit more pointy, I guess. Um, there we, it's supposed to be the force and not the sharpness of the blade that sort of does the trick. Um, yeah, I mean, as you can see, we had a lot of fun. It went on much longer than, up, than that. Um, I'm not gonna put my finger in. I dropped it from like two centimeters height and it stung, so I'm not gonna risk it. I one, one finger injury a year, I think is good enough. But yeah, I had fantastic fun doing this project. Um, happy that also I could finish a project in a single setting or rather on weekend. It did take much longer. I really think I need to get better at estimating how long it'll take. Um, and also finding projects that I can maybe do in a weekend because um, I don't like these multi-parts. I think the router table, for example, is taking forever. But yeah, so anyway, I'm happy I did, I've managed to do this. I added a few bent nails, made sure that these were all rough so it looks more authentic. I was gonna put red paint on it, but I was worried I'd like ruin it, so to give it like a blood effect. But maybe for Halloween, we'll do something around that. Um, so we can set it up somewhere, upstairs for that with the decorations. 
But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I sure as hell had fun making it. My workshop is an absolute mess. It's, <laughs> there's dust everywhere. And it, and it just was like, next step, next step, next step, but never really actually tied it up. So I think that's what I'll be doing and then finally getting this makeup off my face. Um, but yeah, catch you later. And like always, subscribe and like.